in an ideal world, everything will be settled and you won't have to go to the courts to let the courts decide what happens with property. But in the event that you do have to go to the courts, how do they decide who gets the house if you can't decide in a settlement? It's a complicated question that if it had a black and white answer, it would make our job so much yeah. easier and less <laughs> stressful for our clients. There's so many issues and there's always little nuances that you can yeah. find. The easiest way that I've found to describe it is if from the date of your marriage, you get married and you have this big pot that you're cooking in and everything that you own goes into this pot. And once you get married, if you don't have a prenup, the stuff that you had before you're married is also in that pot. So you're yep. cooking with this one big giant pot. And so now you say, okay, if this marriage isn't working, we need to break up. We need to divorce. Divorce, then you start taking things out of the pot and figuring out where they go. And at the end of the day, whether one person has all the equity in a marital home, one person has all the equity in a vacation home, or maybe somebody has all the retirement, it's not that it's splitting the house into. It's yeah. a matter at the end of the day, the columns on both sides should be fairly equal. Okay. Now there's a lot of cases why it shouldn't be equal, you know, and again, we could talk about this forever of what yeah. makes it where you're you're not going to have that straight up 50 50 division if you're just looking for what's normal it's usually you're walking out with some sort of very close to a 50 50 division even though what we work with is equitable so it might not be 100 percent 50 50 it doesn't mean you're getting 50 percent of every single asset it means that at the end of the day the value that you're getting okay. is fairly equal